how you can use photography to make the world a better place. As I approach the 10th year of my photography journey, this is a question that I constantly ask myself. How do I take this hobby of mine and turn it into something greater? How do I turn it into something that adds value not only to my life but to the lives of others? As far-fetched as that may sound, I actually found an answer. But first, let me tell you a bit about myself. I am a family photographer. During my journey exploring myself as a photographer, I've won numerous awards. Some of my works which promotes values of strong families have been selected to be featured in a major local photography exhibition and this has been going on for seven consecutive years. My biggest achievement? Raising more than $30,000 for a local charity from fundraising campaigns that involve my photo books. Despite all these achievements, this one question still haunted my mind forever. How can I use photography to make the world a better place? I prayed almost every day for an answer but it always eluded me. Until one day, a piece of mine that was priced at 2500 was identified for a private collection. Call it an indication from God but at that moment, I knew I had to use my gift to commit to a bigger cause and to try to make my world a better place. I knew that I was never going to find the answer without making an effort. So what did I do? After many long days of sleepless nights and trying to figure out the next move, I dive in head first to set up a social enterprise, an organization built to use photography as a means to uplift the less resourced communities, particularly migrant workers who are our primary group of beneficiaries. To that end, we conduct free workshops, lend cameras to them for free and most importantly, organize opportunities where our beneficiaries could apply what they learn in real life situations, earning unparalleled experience. We also conduct monthly photography contests as well as sponsor talented photographers to take part in local and international photography contests. Our telegram chat alone ballooned to more than 100 members. These things were not easy to accomplish, my friends. The feats we accomplished brought us features on national TV and media. However, that is not what I consider our biggest success story. Our biggest achievement thus far, apart from receiving positive testimonials from the lives we have touched, one of our migrant workers has had her work selected to be featured in a major local photography exhibition. Now, do we stop here? Absolutely not! So how can you use photography to make the world a better place? You need to understand that there is no one single way in which you can achieve this. The key is to constantly look for opportunities to be of service to others. Once you enable people to actively learn, participate in and take an interest in something, half your work is done. After all, none of us are born photographers. On that note, let me tell you a bit about how I became a photographer. My father was always keen on taking photos. He wanted to capture every moment we had as a family, on our trips together, at the park, anywhere he could. Naturally, this burned an interest in me as well, and I started taking photo of everyone when he was tired. To me, this is what photography was, innocent, fun, and limited. It wasn't until 20 years later when I became a father that I decided to be more intentional at taking photos. As a family man myself, I wanted to take beautiful photos of my family so that I could preserve those happy moments forever. That is the power of photo. They have the ability to teleport you through time and re-experience the good old days. Of course, I knew that the photo I take have to be well taken, sharp, and well composed. The takeaway from this story, I allude my success in this field to one simple fact. 
I do not take photographs for the sake of photographs themselves. Ladies and gentlemen, you must look within yourself and see the true reason why you want to take photos. For me, it is a way to preserve beautiful moments, to reminisce on them one day. That is why I care so much about photography. That is why it matters. Coming back to the point, I taught myself how to take good photographs through various online tools, such as YouTube videos and online courses. Depending on where you are, there are probably numerous opportunities for you to learn photography, both paid and for free. If I can do it, so can you. Let me share a story of mine from a few years ago when I paid to attend a seminar trying to pick up new photography knowledge. The facilitator had won numerous international photography awards and had led an expedition to China. There was a group of amateur and beginner photographers with him. They reached a paddy field and he lined up the photographers on his left and right. He placed the beginners close to his side as they might need more of his advice as compared to the rest. He was in the center when they tried to take photos at some farmers at work. He shared his camera settings with the group and commanded the group to fire off. Halfway, he asked the farmers if they could invite more of their farmers' friends to be in the photo shoot. Within a few minutes, the paddy field was filled with farmers and buffaloes at work. He commanded the group to fire off again. When he returned to Singapore after his expedition, he submitted his photos at the paddy field to an international photography award. And guess what? The submission came in first. How, you might ask? He shared one principle that I still remember today. Choreography is vital to taking good photos. When he sensed he did not have enough farmers to fill up the frame, he asked for more farmers to join in so that he could achieve the visual in his mind. I wondered, though, in the same circumstances, would I have managed to take such a winning shot? After the seminar, I asked him whether he believed the beginners could have managed such a shot. His reply, absolutely. This made me think. I thought to myself, if even a beginner might win a photography award at their first photo shoot, then everyone can take wow pictures. A bet under proper guidance and supervision. The seminar inspired me to the point that I even went on to teach basic photography workshop Island White in 2017 and touch hundreds of lives under the project Everyone Can Take Wow Pictures. Go ahead and Google Everyone Can Take Wow Pictures. Now that you understand choreography is important in photography, let us move on to two other elements that are crucial to the perfect photo, lighting and composition. Light is a dynamic element that can make or break your photo. It can help to convey the emotions in your photos. Light can come from a variety of sources, both natural and manic, and you can use it in a number of different ways. The key here is understand light and how it works in different situations and how to make best use of light with your subjects. Composition is how you choose to combine various elements to tell a story. For composition, there are many techniques and you can find the information online. You don't need to know all of them. My advice is to focus on two or three techniques such as rule of third, diagonal lines, fill the frame and master them to the point where it becomes intuitive for you. Both lighting and composition play an important role besides choreography in making a great photo. Now you may be wondering, since I know so much about the intricacies of photography, do I ever make a mistake? Well, let me answer that with one word, tons of them. I made a lot of mistakes along the way. I took many photos that were blurred, too dark, too bright, and too grainy, and they are sitting in my hard disk now. It is absolutely normal to make mistakes as a human being. It is 
normal to make mistakes while we are learning. Of course, the dread we feel after making a mistake isn't uncommon either. We feel terrible and we may even judge ourselves too harshly off of one mistake. The fact, however, is that it happens to all of us. Nothing can change the fact and nothing can make those photos good. However, the problem arises when we refuse to learn from our mistakes as Albert Einstein once said. Insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different outcome. That leads me to this. One reliable way to improve as a photographer is to review and reflect every time after a photo shoot. You ought to ask yourselves, how can you make the photos that you had just taken better? Could you have taken the photo from a different angle? What would the photo look like if there were more subjects in the frame? What is the key subject or story that you want to tell with your photo? And how could you make the conversation more interesting? Review and reflect on these questions constantly and you will be on your way to become a better photographer than your yesterday self. My friends, once you have a better appreciation and understanding of choreography, lighting and composition techniques, you don't need to stop there. You may want to explore different genres of photography as well. Maybe try taking pictures of hands, cars, people, or buildings. Find new and exciting way to challenge yourself and have fun doing it. Find a niche, a subject that you love to take pictures of, a subject that you are fascinated with and you are more than willing to go through the hassle to get those photos. Birders, for example, have to travel with a huge backpack and travel for miles and sometimes settle under hot scorching sun just to get their shots. If bird watching is your thing and you are okay to go through all of this, then by all means, go ahead. Make that your photography passion. If you have kept up with me during these past few minutes and have understood the few terms we have discussed, then congratulations my friends. You will now find yourself in a stronger position to use photography to make the world a better place. The question still remains, how does one accomplish that? Share your knowledge, tips and guide fellow new photographers. Inspire them to see the world in a different light. Inspire them to do good with their photography. The easiest way to do this is to start a page on social media outlets such as Facebook, Instagram and Pinterest. Places where you can share your experiences and works. Besides sharing, you can also add value to the lives of others with photography. Take photos that tell of an untold story, tales of unsung heroes, endangered bird species, effects of climate change, and the list goes on. In addition, you can also join societies or organizations that have values that are aligned with yours. If you are a birder, approach societies that focus on preserving the birds' habitats, approach private or government-owned conservatory agencies and share your photos and aspirations with them. If you are a street photographer, you can approach the local town council or even the tourism board. Share your unique perspective of the streets and landmarks and you might get a chance for feature at their media and start getting noticed for your works. I have learned that we need not be alone in our journey to make the world a better place. More often than not, there are people and organizations that are already doing something that is related to your cause. Collaborate and partner with them so that we could have more synergy and have a wider influence. Making the world a better place does not happen in a single day. My friends, it does not take a single act or a single person to bring true change. However, when little by little, each one of us makes an effort, there is no doubt we will be able to achieve something worthwhile. Empower others 
and you will be empowered. My friends, thank you.